Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Right, you ever wonder where some players end up after Old Trafford? I'm going to take a look at one footballer from each season who did make an appearance for Man United that year, but are now playing for the smallest club. Oh, by the way, I'm not picking the same player twice. Alright, let's go. 0405, Tim Howard, Memphis 901. Yeah, it's middle to think Tim Howard is still going. Christ, what? It's been 15 years since this fellow was Man United number one. He's still playing, coming out of retirement last year at 41 years of age. Either he hates his wife for the burning passion, or he's discovered that daytime TV is about as entertaining as watching a cat lick it. Itself. He's back on the pitch at Memphis 901 FC in the USL Championship. Lads, this is a list filled with former Man United players who are stuffed out in the back corners of the globe, playing for clubs no bigger than a teapot. But just like a certain body part of mine, Memphis 901 is impressively small. Based in Tennessee, they have a 10,000 seater stadium, were founded in 2018 by Howard. He's like the American version of Spencer Owen. Their main shareholders also have a share in Dagenham and Redbridge, so that sort of shows you where we're at. It was founded in January 2018. Christ, this channel's been going longer than that. Oh yeah, and the body part. I was talking about was my baby finger. Look at it, it's like a mouse's eyelash. 0506 Giuseppe Rossi, Real Salt Lake. Who remembers Giuseppe Rossi? The Italian-American version of Diego Forlan, with both players clearly reading from the same script. Spend three years permanently changing the Old Trafford bench before exploding into global superstardom with a bunch of goals of Lariel. To be fair, this guy did score for Man United during the 0506 season, but then again, it was against Sunderland, one of the worst Premier League sides to ever exist. Christ, that defence would probably have been penetrated by a terminally ill donkey. Anyway, this guy is only 33, but injuries have literally chewed his career into soggy wet pasta. After spending nearly two years unemployed and spending last January training with Man United at a sheer goddamn pity, he's recently passed a trial with MLS team Real Salt Lake. The fact that a former international Italian striker with over 100 goals in European football was forced to partake in a trial for a Utah club formed in July 2004, it must have been like a slap in the face. 0607, Phil Marsh, Pilkington FC. Okay, most Man United fans won't have a clue who or what a Phil Marsh was, but that's, he did actually play a first team game for you during the 0607 season. A 19 year old striker, he started up front alongside Ali Gunnar Solskjaer on a 2 1 League Cup win at Crew Alexandra. Poor old Ali. A Champions League win being chucked in with a bunch of kids. Who did they think he was? Michael Jackson? Clearly that must have been a degrading punch to the ego. Who else played that night? Richie Jones, David Jones, Kieran Lee, Michael Barnes, Ryan Shawcross. It's almost like Fergie chucked the contents of a septic tank out of the goddamn pitch. Anyway, while Solskjaer has gone on to manage the club on £6 million a year, his strike partner from that night, by contrast, is currently 33 and playing in the ninth tier of English football for something called Pilkington FC. Sure, they were formed in 1938, but make no mistake about it, they're a glorified pub team filled with defenders who probably spend their evenings working the drive through a Costa Coffee. 0708, Lee Martin, Epsom United. Lee Martin was a Man United nobody whose career wasn't actually a million miles away from the Premier League. Sure, as a winger, his end product was a big bag of cat food, but he still played over 100 championship games for Ipswich and Millwall. Anyway, back in 2003, this was a teenager being courted by nearly every big club in the country, with Man United actually paying Wimbledon a million pounds for his goddamn signature. Anyway, he played 45 minutes in a 2 0 defeat at home to Coventry in the League Cup back in 2007. If this was audition, it was pretty embarrassing, as the club conceded two goals to some guy from Malta. But hey, the club ended up Champions League winners that season, so who really cares? Anyway, Martin is now 33 and currently playing for Epsom United in the sixth tier of English football. They were just recently relegated to the National League South, playing in front of less than 5,000 people. Christ above, I'm guessing this fella hasn't shut up in the dressing room telling everyone what Cristiano Ronaldo smells like. 0809 Zoran Tosic, Paizu Yuanda FC. Ah oh, yes, everyone remembers Zoran Tosic, a Serbian winger who's one big fuss over nothing. Once tipped as Ronaldo's natural heir at Old Trafford, he'll never play twice for Man United, making his debut in an FA Cup win over Tottenham in January 2009. If you want to look for proof that Stradix Ferguson is human after all, then Tosic is walking evidence that he also makes mistakes. Fast forward over 10 years and while Ronaldo is still going strong at the top of Serie A, Tosic is 33 in slumming of Taiju Wanda FC of the backers of the Chinese second tier. This club were formed in January 2017, play at something called the Taixing Sports Centre and were clearly named after a goddamn furniture shop. 0910 Gabriel Obertan, Buyuk Seher Beledi Erzurum Sport. Gabriel Obertan is probably thankful there's no such thing as 10 year Man United reunions. Listen, most of the players in this list were mostly reserve teamers at Old Trafford with no real expectations. But Overtime was a first teamer who played nearly 30 games for the club. There is no excuse for this. The fact he's only 31 years of age and currently seeking employment at Björk Seher Baladei Erzurumspor in Turkey second tier, oh it's all kinds of humiliating. Whereas former bench warming teammates are now currently earning wages at decent clubs like Leicester, Leon and Watford, this guy by contrast is playing for one of the most obscure clubs on the planet. Honestly, their name alone looks like somebody just vomited a bowl of alphabet spaghetti onto a page. If Fergie 
a guy who believed in him enough to sign him from Bordeaux, if he ever finds out where his former protege is, oh, it'd be like your old English teacher learning that you currently sell your earwax online for cash. 1011 Nanny Orlando City. Ah, oh, lads, remember the De Silva twins? Neither were particularly great, but at least Raphael had some levels of technique. Fabio was definitely the evil twin, at least when it came to defending like a normal human being. They were like the Brazilian Jedward. Sure, they're both annoying as sin, but you can tell the one on the left was probably starved of nutrients in the womb. But neither make the list because for some reason, they're both playing for two of the most successful clubs in French football. Instead, that forward Nani, who's arguably Man United's player of the season back in 1011, and now at 33, the man is clearly eating creatine sandwiches out in the MLS with Orlando City. I can't work out if this guy is still a footballer or if he's just auditioning for the next season of Jersey Shore. Like Tevez and Boca Juniors, this is a guy who finally got his dream move back to his boyhood club before realizing that after a year, then no, he'd actually prefer to drown in cash with some no mark club. Orlando City are a Florida based team in the MLS who were formed in November 2013. This club is literally seven years old and have already signed Kaka, Nani, and Sean St. Ledger. They, uh, they, they they probably don't boast about the last one. 11-12, Zeke Fryer, Swindon Town. Ezekiel Fryers was another fuss over nothing. A promising young left back who made his debut for the club at 19 years of age in a 3-0 League Cup win at Leeds United. Christ above, this fella played Champions League football that season. Groomed as a natural heir to Patrice Evra. Instead, he was just a big bucket of horse stick. Anyway, he's only 27 in the peak years of his career and he's currently the Swindon Town left back in League One. But don't get me wrong, Swindon are an historic club and were formed in 1879, but let's not kid anyone, they are a small club. Despite briefly chucked into the media spotlight when they were sponsored by a football magazine and employing a borderline nutcase in the dugout. 1213 Anders Lindegaard Helsingborg. Anders Lindegaard is a man who once kept David Ahea out of the Man United lineup. Well let's be honest he was just another Thomas Kuchek. This club had a proud history of employing world class Danes between the sticks but this man clearly a championship standard stamped on his head. Anyway he's currently 36 and still going strong by Helsingborg out in Sweden. A team coached by Olaf Milberg who in five years is probably going to be 60% beard. To be fair they're a moderately successful club out in Scandinavia but let's be honest most people only know of them because they employ Henrik Larsson, 1314 Alexander Butner, New England Revolution. Let's be honest, I think most people could tell from the off that Alexander Butner couldn't really defend another bang average left back who was decent going forward, but was like a virtual cow pat when it came to clearing the ball. A perfect example of that fact is that yes, he did score in Sir Alex Ferguson's last ever game, great, but he also formed part of a back four which conceded a five at West Brom. So is it any real surprise that at the age of 31 he's out in the MLS with New England Revolution, a 26 year old club coached by Bruce Arena, 1415 Marnik Vermijl, MVV Maastricht. All right, hands up. Who actually remembers Marnik Vermijl? Some Belgian right back who actually made his debut against Shamrock Rovers. So did Ronaldo when he moved to Real Madrid. They, uh, they've gone on to have different legacies. Vermijl was part of the Man United team which lost 4 0 MK Don to Louis van Gaal, which was effectively him signing his own death warrant. Considering the Dutchman instantly went to shove nearly every footballer involved the utter disgrace down the goddamn job centre. Has he landed on his feet? Not really. He's currently 28 and playing for MVV Maastricht in Dutch football second tier. 15 16, James Wilson, Salford City. Remember when James Wilson was the next big thing at Man United? He was the original Mason Greenwood back when Green when was collecting Pokemon cards. But no, the supposed future Man United prodigy is still only 24 years of age and currently playing for Salford City in League 2. Sure, he's playing for a club run by the class of 92, so there's still that Man United link, but League 2 football, what a fall from grace. Special mention to Donald Love, a former Man United fullback who currently plays for Shrewsbury, or as Eden Hazard likes to call them, Strawberry. 16-17, Wayne Rooney, Derby County. Okay, yes, I realise Matteo Darmian is at Parma, and Josh Harp is at Preston, but historically, they are big clubs. Christ love, Parma used to employ some of the best players on the planet, while Preston were the original Invincibles. Even Nice, who currently employ Morgan Schleidland, even they're a semi-sizable club in France. So instead, I have to go with Wayne Rooney and Derby County. Yes, I realise Derby are a big club in their own right. Yes, they had massive success under Brian Clough, but I just think Preston's incredible dominance in the black and white era just shades it for them. Sorry, Derby fans. 1780, Maron Fellaini, Shandong Luneng. Okay, lads, very few footballers from the 1718 season are currently at small clubs. I'll go for Maron of Fellaini, I suppose, who's currently stuffing cash up his nose at Shandong Luneng. But lads, it's ignorant to call them a small club. Unlike some Chinese teams, they actually have a history. They were formed over 60 years ago, playing a 56,000 seater stadium, and have won the Chinese Super League four times. But still, who else am I gonna pick? 1819, Matteo Darmian, Parma. Again, lads, I realize Parma are a big club still, but they're the smallest one I can pick from last season. Because the only other departures from last season played Inter Milan and PSG. So yeah, closing off the list, Matteo Darmian playing for a club who've had more makeovers than Kim Kardashian. Christ above, this is a club who get refounded every six years. They're almost like a goddamn zombie. Surprise, they're still standing. The club must stink of death. Anyway, that's the end of it, lads. Let me know. Are there any that you disagree with? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.